Hi, this is Mike Fisher from Digigogy.com, D-I-G-I-G-O-G-Y.com, and today we're going to look at a web tool called Storybird at Storybird.com. Storybird is a collaborative storytelling website that allows students to pick artwork and then write their own stories that they can read online. They can share them with each other. They can even purchase a copy of the book that they write. Before I show you how to create a storyboard, I want to show you what one looks like. And I'm pulling from some that have already been created in my account. This one by a student named Caleb, who was a seven-year-old that we brought into a workshop with teachers to show teachers how this service works and how it really does work with young students. Caleb's story is called Caleb's Story About Night, and when it opens, it's going to show us a bigger version of the book, and this is really nice to project up on a screen or use on a smart board. In the corner of the book here is the open button, and when I click that, it opens it up into full screen mode so that we can read Caleb's story uh, projected you know, really big, or if a student is reading this on a computer, it makes it bigger so that they can uh, read it. Caleb's story um, really is just descriptive sentences about each picture. And as I scroll through the book that he's created here, you'll see there's some opportunities for working with Caleb around particular skills that he might need within the writing process. Uh, for instance, the connectivity and the flow of his story from beginning to end. Um, for a seven-year-old, this is pretty articulate, but it doesn't have the story flow. He's really just describing the pictures. There are also some opportunities for more descriptive language, uh, for spelling and punctuation issues. Uh, but all in all, this gives us um, some information about Caleb as a writer that you know we can use the same way that we would you know do this traditionally in the classroom where the kids would write stuff down. What I like about Storybird and this collaborative storytelling environment online is it lets us take what we would normally do in the traditional sense in the classroom and upgrade it to a 21st century way of doing things. Not only are they going, are the students going to be able to interact with this particular tool in an online environment that they're comfortable working in, they also have opportunities to collaborate within this system and they can add comments to each other's stories. And they can do this with the kids that are in their classroom or they can do this with kids that are halfway around the world. There's a lot of collaboration levels that could happen here. And collaboration is one of those big 21st century skills that really need to be invited into the classroom if it's not already represented. Now, you've seen what the Storybird looks like. If you wanted to purchase this Storybird, um, there is a buy button here and you can purchase either a soft cover or a hard cover version. There are also school programs through this service uh, where you can get um, different amenities around you know what you're doing with your students and uh, possibly discounted pricing um, and school-based licensing. Um, when you come to this website for the first time, it would be helpful if you went ahead and set up an account, but if you didn't, you'll be asked to do that whenever you're done with your Storybird. In order to create one, you just click on the Create button. You'll see a bank of artwork, and this is the artwork that you'll choose to create your Storybird. If you don't like what you see, click on See More Art. That'll give you 16 more options of artwork to choose from. If you don't like any of these, you can continue to press the reload button until you find something that you like. I'm going to click on this one here with the pumpkin and it's going to show me other artwork by this artist and if this looks good to me then I'm ready to start a Storybird by clicking on the Start a Storybird button here. If I don't like this I could obviously just press the back button um, when I use this with students, I do give them a minute or so to look for artwork, but I don't want them to get decision paralysis and spend, you know, half an hour trying to find the absolutely perfect artwork. I want them to get down to business, uh, to the business of writing. So when I'm happy with this, I'm going to click on Start a Storybird, and I get this interface. The main part of what I write is going to be here in the middle. 
my dashboard of pages that I'm writing is going to be down here across the bottom and then the artwork that is in this bank of artwork is populated on the sides here and I can move these around if I click on one of them it'll show me a bigger preview and this way I can look around at what is actually in the system here down here at the bottom my dashboard I need to add a few pages for my book and then I need to pick pictures to go on those pages. This is one of the reasons that I like this website a lot because you get the visual first and one of the big issues with the writing process for kids is those ideas uh, for writing and if they have the the visual first the representation then you know perhaps the writing will come a little bit easier once the visual is in place. So I'm going to pull in a couple of pictures and I'm just dragging and dropping. And the pictures can go on the right or the left, up top, below, or if it fills up the area then it's just going to, uh, there's not going to be any place for text. So I'm going to want to move that up so that I've got a place to write. I'm going to add one more picture. Let's see what's in here. An octopus. And then I'm going to go back and actually write my story. The story that I write is going to go in this box here. And on each page I type inside this box. I can save what I write to come back to later by pressing the save button. And when I'm ready to publish, I click on the menu button and choose the publish option. And just so that you know, whenever you do get ready to publish this, if it's going to be in the public gallery, you can't have any names or schools associated with it. Uh, this is a very safe site to use uh, with teachers and students and they want to make sure that um, kids and school names are not being associated together. Likewise, if someone actually looks at these books before they're put into the public gallery and if there's anything that's offensive um, it will not be published to the public gallery or if it is published initially it will be removed from the public gallery uh, upon further inspection just so you know. Um, this is a very safe site to use with students. When I'm done, I want to make sure that I go back to the cover page <clears throat> and make sure that I have a name here. And I'm just going to type in my name and then I'm going to give this a title. And when I'm done, I'm going to click on Publish This Storybird. It will save it and then it will put it into my area of Storybird. It'll ask me for some options. Uh, such as a summary, some tags to make it easily easy to find, separated with commas, whether or not I want this story bird to be private or public, and the age range for the reader. Um, if you've got older kids creating these for use with younger kids, they would choose, you know, the average age of their audience. If the kids are creating it for themselves, then they would choose their age range here. And then I click Publish. This is going to take me back to my area of Storybird so that I can see all of the things that I've published within their system. Um, it shows me the Storybird that I just created. And if I click on you up top, meaning me, then I get to see all of the Storybirds that I have created, including the most recent one here. 
Additionally, Storybird does have support for teachers for classes, and this will allow you to do things like uh, make assignments in here for your students to collaborate with each other, and most importantly, for you to add your students in here so they don't need an email address to sign up. You put their names in here and Storybird will generate um, usernames and passwords for your students so that they can interact with the website without having to sign up on their own. Uh, and These are the things that you can do with the, the classes section of Storybird, add students, create an assignment, um, and that becomes real helpful when you're using this for instruction. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can contact me through my website at digigaji.com. There's a contact button on in the top right hand corner and this will route to my email. And just leave your comments or questions here, click submit, and I will get back to you ASAP. I hope this has been helpful and I thank you very much for enjoying learning about storybird.com.